everybody, it's Michelle Ford for SLR Lounge. I'm back again. We're talking about setting the tone at the shoot when you're doing a glamour boudoir or beauty shoot. It's probably safe to say that a good percentage of the women I shoot for boudoir have probably never met me in person before the shoot. We'll communicate via email or over the phone, so it's pretty normal that when they come in for the session, the nerves are a lot higher than normal. So there's a few things that I do that help alleviate that, and most of it is done in the makeup room, and all of it is done without alcohol. So first, the no alcohol rule. Let's get that out of the way now. People hate to be judged, and boudoir shoots are, it's a field mind for the brain to go ballistic about getting judged. Clients joke all the time um, about maybe just needing a sip of wine or a shot of alcohol, and I actually decided a long time ago that I just didn't want to go there. First of all, I know people who turn pink or red when they get anywhere close to alcohol, just the smell of it, and they're turning pink. And maybe it's just me or my circle of friends, but we're total cheap dates, and a super duper lightweight like me after one shot, I also get that glassy-eyed look. I really don't want to have to Photoshop out any signs of inebriation. The other big main reason that I have is I don't want to have to play police. I don't want to um, put myself in the situation where I have to cut somebody off. Yeah, I don't like conflict. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I'd just rather keep that door closed. I'd rather just spend the energy breaking the ice and alleviating tension other ways. So I'm gonna show you what else I do uh, to get past that without alcohol. The general rule when you're going to a wedding as a guest is that the bride is the only one in white and you cannot try to outshine her. It's her day. So I kind of approach my shoots the same way. In fact, I dress down, I mean way down. I skip the makeup, I wear sweats, I wear flip flops. I want her to be the belle of the ball. I lay out the excuse that shoots are major workouts for me and my team, which they are, and girls usually understand and excuse my lack of professionalism with my outfit, but more importantly, it focuses her eye on the brightest spot in the room, which is herself. So if I were a guy though, I don't know that I might come in looking too sloppy because looking professional oh, kind of carries more weight, but give it a try. It gives her a boost of confidence. I also spend the first half of the makeup session chatting with a client. I want her to get to know me. So again, she hasn't met me yet, so this is my time. We get comfortable around each other, we talk about life, we talk about all the fun, non-photo related stuff, and occasionally I'll divert the, con the conversation to my assistant or my makeup artist. Just giving her a breath so it's not always about her and me, and it gives her just time to relax even more but I like to include her in the discussion, just kind of like a bunch of girlfriends in a room. And then I'll slowly bring us back around to talks of fashion. It's the perfect segue to discussing the outfits that she brought. I'm a major fashion addict, so gushing about shoes, accessories, outfits, it's really natural, so it just kind of happens. But as we're discussing each of the pieces she brought, I'm also gauging her reaction to each of those pieces. I'm not only trying to identify which outfits would best suit her, I'm also trying to get the backstory on those pieces. There's a reason why she chose those things and I kind of want to get it out of her and I also want to know which one she's really comfortable in because it makes a difference. I ask my clients to put together an inspiration board for the shoots using Pinterest. I like to see what styles they're interested in, and it also gives me a really clear idea of their comfort range. I mean, I'll offer up my own boards as a starting point, and for my boudoir clients, I really like to emphasize that sexy doesn't necessarily mean naked. It's really a mindset, and after we talk about the outfits, we'll review the photo styles that appeal to her, and then we'll kind of gauge where our direction is gonna go from there. Now, once all these discussions are in place, my assistant and I will plan out the shoot. While the client's finishing up on the makeup chair, we'll walk around, check the lighting setups, make sure that everything matches the outfits, maybe even plan out the poses, and then we'll circle back to the client and bring her into the plan. That way she feels like she's part of it, since it really and truly is a collaborative effort. Music, people ask me this all the time. I do bring a wireless speaker and a charger for my phone, and I'll stream music in the makeup room during prep. I tend not to bring music into my shoot, however, because I personally find it kind of distracting. A good song comes on and I start dancing or she starts singing and then we end up in a fit of giggles. It kind of is hard to get back into the mode we were in once we move out of it, so I just don't bring it. The thing is, 
These types of shoots really call on me to be a friend, a confidant, even sometimes a psychiatrist. I kind of feel like a hairdresser sometimes. It's an emotionally sensitive shoot and I'm super hyper aware of that. So I do my best to get her into her comfort, comfort zone and it just makes it easier for me as well. So I hope some of these ideas help you out for your next shoot. I'd really love to hear how you guys handle your shoots. Drop a comment, find us on Facebook, leave me some notes. I'd love to see what you guys do and see if I can incorporate it in my shoot next time too. Till next time, Michelle Ford, SLR Lounge.